I'm Melissa Idris and you're watching For The Win. This week, I'm at Common Ground in KL Eco City and joining me back on the show is Shankar Santiram, Managing Consultant of EQTD Consulting, also on a daily show on radio, mm -hmm. on light, yep. called The Right Perspective. It's 6.50 a.m. Yep. and 9.10 a.m. and you catch him on light. Every, um, every morning. Day, every morning. I have yeah. to get up every morning and get to the studio at 6 o'clock in the morning because it's commit. No, it's not. I don't go there. <laughs> and then you come and do the show with us on For The Win. And I'm really uh, impressed with myself that you've actually invited me back again. You know? <laughs> every week That's I think you're right. going to fire me, but uh, yes, let me see if I well, you know, get fired today. Last week mm -hmm. you talked about something really important. I, I, I had a lot of. Um, well, only last week. The, the, other, the other five <laughs> weeks I didn't well, talk about anything important. last week because it was quality relationships That's and right. I thought you know I, I got a, I got a, a lot of takeaway from that about building quality relationships because at the end of the day everything we do at the office mm -hmm. at work boils down to the quality of the relationship we the relationships we have with those people yep. now and I, it got me thinking Shankar about uh, what that means right so why do I want to build quality relationships it's because I have to collaborate with them I have to work with them mm -hmm. and there is a certain dynamic in the office that kind of breaks down mm -hmm. if I don't invest in building those relationships yeah. so I want to talk a little bit, mm -hmm. bit about that today okay um, about what it means to the basis of all that the okay. basis of that relationship is as you mentioned yet last week the uh, a healthy regard for what that person does and the respect for their purpose yeah right yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. I think that so little time is spent on nurturing relationships at the workplace. And we nurture very superficial relationships at the workplace. Yeah. We go maka maka regularly. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. We talk about Game of Thrones episodes, um, which, <laughs> and, I, and I think there is a place for that because that uh, is the camaraderie that we need, the connections that we have with people. Mm -hmm. But essentially, I'm only truly interested in you when I appreciate and understand that you have goals, you have needs, you have challenges, and you have concerns, mm. right? And uh, there is a philosophy called an, the outward mindset. The right? outward mindset. Yeah. So the Arbinger Institute in the United States created this, and without going into too much detail about that particular institute, I'm not a certified trainer, none of that for them, but I enjoy the work, and I've used a lot of that work in my own private life. Mm -hmm. I've used that work when I talk to my clients. I've also used the kind of philosophy mm. uh, in dealing with people in my own organization. Now, I need to look at you and I need to understand that you and I have a functional relationship. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's go back to basics. This is my sixth or seventh episode with seventh you. Episode, seventh episode yes. with you right now. Uh, we've got three more after this. And then I would like to be invited back again. <laughs> That's, uh, and this is my marketing pitch to you and I'm doing it on air. So, you know, you can't say <laughs> that I'm response. being a little bit, you know. No, no, you don't have to answer this right now. The, the idea is not for you to say, yes, yes, we're going to take you. But I know that this is my purpose drive. And okay. we talked about this in episode one, which is purpose drive. Start right? So I, I yeah. know that that's what I'd like. Mm. I'm also very clear why that's good for me mm. or why I need it. When I see you once a week to make the show, I prepare, I have to increase my own efficacy, I have to actually get better before I even kind of you know pitch up and talk to you. Mm -hmm. So which means my learning increases every week. I write a column in the New Straits Times, 850 words, and I alluded to this before, how it kills me every week yeah. to write this. And I do it not because of anyone else, but I do it for myself. So I'm quite purpose driven in the way I do it, mm -hmm. right? That's the first part, the purpose driven. The moment I'm clear about my purpose, I can see what I want. And in organizations, you need to be purpose-driven. You want to get results. Okay. You want your organization to feel like having you on board adds value to them. Right? That's what we want. How do we do that? I need to work with you. To, in order for me to be invited back in here again, I need to understand your goals, yeah. your needs, your challenges and concerns. Like, for example, I need to, you, know, you don't want me to be rambling on for so long that you have to edit in right. the edit room for three hours because I'm talking so much. I need to keep sound bites, I need to be sharper, I need to be sweeter. Right. That relationship only works, right? If I understand your goals, mm. 
okay. your needs, mm. your challenges and concerns. Right. Yeah. Now, you understand my goals, needs, challenges, concerns. You know I want to come back again. So you want to throw something to me and I do it. So what do we do is we do this little dance right. the whole time. Right. And that's only because we're purpose driven and because we are we have that outward mindset. Okay. Everybody comes into That's work on an mindset inward is. mindset where you are constantly looking at me, oh, so myself, in, and I. Inward mindset is when you're just kind of consumed with what your purpose is, what you want, your goals. So now outward mindset means I'm aware of what you're doing, what you want to do, and how you want to get there. I'm totally vested in my own internal of needs. Of course, we, okay? all we all are. We all are. Right? So yeah. we, are all, we all are. But I also have gone, taken it one step further by understanding that the only way that I can get what I want is to give you what you want. Nice. Right? Okay. And I think this is what's missing in most organizations. So that's why this banter, the going maka maka and the team building program, so on and so forth, they don't really help unless you approach it at this level. So you need to put two or three people together and say, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, right? But do you three understand why you need to do this right. and how symbiotic your relationship is? And the moment we have those little aha moments uh -huh. where we go, yeah, that's the way. Okay, say it one more time, Shankar. The only way to get what I want is to give you what you want. That's right. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to continue our conversation after this. Make sure you stay with For The Win. We'll be back. Welcome back to For The Win. I'm Melissa Idris with Shankar Santiram, which uh, before the break, Shankar, you mentioned, uh, you talked a little bit about goals, needs, challenges and concerns, yeah. right? How do we deal with those things in the workplace? In order for you to feel that I'm adding value to you, you want a sense of, you need to feel that I understand you. Yeah. But the lack of understanding and the mismatch of expectations is the biggest problem in every organization. The cause for friction almost all, all the, time. the time. In your relationships, mm -hmm. in your friendships, mm. in your partnerships, in your businesses mm. and at work. Mm. Susie and I, my wife, Susanna and I, I mean like we've had this discussion numerous times. The only time we fight is when there is a mismatch of expectations. Mm -hmm. When she expects me to do something and I don't do it and I go like, well, am I a mind reader? Why don't you <laughs> articulate it and tell me? And she goes, we've been together for 12 years. You we should know. Yeah. So we have now established that I don't have, I have obvious memory lapses and that I am in need of constant attention. Um, and I have an attention span of an amoeba sometimes. You know, right? that doesn't sound like an adult. <laughs> I do not purport to be an adult. <laughs> you know, in private, very much like a toddler. I am like a toddler at home. <laughs> and I can say that my wife is the same. And we both, we've both worked out what we are, uh, what we need to help each other with. And so we don't have these kind of, you know, so if, uh, when I want my wife to come back home on time, uh, it's very clear with me because my wife is from Austria, so you would imagine that Germanic nature of being on time yeah. uh, is important. But uh, unfortunately, and I know I'm going to get another smack this week for this, <laughs> uh, my wife has lived in Asia for the last 25 years. And she she's more Malaysian. Malaysian time, okay. Four o'clock means, you know, 4.30 and stuff like that. So you know, I, I, I no longer get upset with this because I understand goals, <laughs> needs, challenges and concerns, mm. right? So she is in the clinic with a patient. She finishes right. the patient at five o'clock. So technically, she closes the, you know, closes her stuff, you know, takes all the, you know, takes the stethoscope away, gets in the car, 10 minutes for me, 10 minutes to wrap up, get in the car, drive off. I had to realize that her goals need some concerns. She finishes that, she needs to remember what this patient's specific problem is. So if, if you have a, a cat with cancer, for example, and the distraught nature of the pet owner, oh, yeah requires her to write them an email after that or to send them a text message oh. to craft something, to have a cup of tea and to calm down. calm down herself and then work through this. So I am waiting for her at home at 5.30 because we've got an appointment to go somewhere, right? Um, yes, I need to understand Stand goals, that. needs, okay. challenges, concerns. So right. I usually now, and then I tell you how this, how this dynamic actually works in our own relationship. When someone says, can you come uh, for dinner at 6 o'clock in the evening? To join us, and will Susie and you come at six o'clock in the evening for dinner? My first, before I'll, I'll get back to you, let me check with the wife. Check with Bosco. You know what I mean? Um, uh, <laughs> once, once that's clear, <laughs> once that's clear. I'm the real Bosco for me. This is my wife, right? So I check with her before. I, before. 
<laughs> before I come, uh, before I say yes to that, uh, to the dinner Invitation, yeah. But I don't ask my wife, can we go for dinner this day? Are you free? I go like, what time do you finish work right. on this day? So she'll look at the calendar and she goes, oh yeah, last patient's at 5.30. Then I'll say, then my next question is, can we go out for dinner with Melissa? And you know, and uh, she says, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then I call Melissa and I say, can we come at 7? I make the time now based on her goals, needs, challenges, concerns. I know that there is no way that we're going to make it at 6.30. 6 o'clock okay. or 6.30. Right. It might even be 7.30 because I need to give that hour's buffer zone. Okay. Now, that's what collaboration is. That kind of understanding, and, right? And respect. Okay. See, and why? I respect the work that she does. Okay. You know, and she makes me proud. And I made it very clear uh, to my wife that as long as I have a sense of, you know, as long as I'm proud of what you do, uh -huh. Right, and as long as I feel that you are proud of what I do, I think we both can actually make this work. Okay, so in a work setting, for instance, say you've got, uh, you know, you're working on a project with your diff with colleagues, knowing that one of the colleagues has is going through issues at home or has punctuality issues. Problems, yes. The the idea is to understand that even though the purpose is the same which yeah. is to get the project yeah. done right? yeah. so some kind of compromise will be allowances allowances, Make allowances. okay all right so if you're always going to be late let's schedule a time that yeah. works for you yeah. and that way you know that everyone's going to be there working on the same thing and if you are always going to be late i'm going to have a conversation with you about right. this okay i'm going to say that you know i completely understand that you've got 12 different things to do before you get here mm -hmm. or you have a family problem and mm -hmm. so on and so forth but you know I also have a range of issues and problems and I can use that time instead of hanging around waiting in a coffee shop somewhere for you right. or sitting in a meeting room for you. Why don't we talk to each other and you just tell me. I'm going to be completely easy with you. There's no penalization. I'm not going to get angry with right. you. Just, you know what, the deal I make with you is give me an hour's notice. Okay. Right. So if you're going to be late, tell me an hour before so that I can make some plans. Okay. And if you come late after that and if I'm in a bad mood, don't get upset with me. That's great. Have you got a okay. deal? So then yeah. we shake hands, we go, we're cool, we're cool. And then I've made it, it's, life is all about a series of deals that you make. Right? You, make deals, you make deals with yourself, mm -hmm. right? You know, you try and lose weight and then you make a deal with yourself that today is going to be my I'm cheat day. I'm constantly bargaining with myself. Well, yeah, you know what, I'm going to have like that extra, you know, I was in Jakarta a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. right? And I'm trying to keep my weight down. Uh, and oh, that so, must have so, been tough in well, Jakarta. Well, it's tough. I, so I end up going to a Padang restaurant, which mm. is my favorite, you know, restaurant Sederhana in Jakarta. I'm there, you know, in Ben Hill. And I see the thing, and I'm on my own, so I'm going, like, it's easy to go on my own. I don't have to take the full complement of everything. So I go, he done, you know, three, four things I put. Did I stop? Mm. No, I had to go. I was flying back after that meal. I had to sleep. I made a deal with myself that I have to do certain things the next day to detox myself after this amount of food that I put in. We make deals all the time with ourselves. We make deals with our children. We make deals with our folks. Kids, kids, young kids will turn up and say like, Dad, Mom, you know, if I do this, if I get this number of days, will you take me to Legoland? Or can That's we go, true. if you're a bit more affluent, can we go to, I don't know, Tokyo Disneyland or something, right? There's and always some Everyone kind of is making a deal. A deal. Yeah, because you teach your children how to make deals on the time they are young. Because you tell them, okay, if you do this, I'll do that for you. If you right. do this, you know, if you eat now, I will take you there. Yeah. It's a series of like rewards and punishments. Or oh, have your spinach, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a yeah. series of rewards and punishment. Yeah. Now, why is it that when we come to work alone, we think that that doesn't apply? Uh -huh. We've been educated with that the whole time. That's our, So it's a series of rewards. It's a series of deals that we make in the office place. Okay. So the way to navigate that is to have that respect for the deal, right? Mutual respect. So you understand what the purpose is yep. and the expectations are, yep. and then you go, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to negotiate a deal that respects you Absolutely. and works for me. Absolutely. And you must do that, you know? And if someone is not willing to make that deal with you, mm. then you know they don't need you. <laughs> okay, we're going to come back and navigate office dynamics further with Shankar Santiram on For The Win after this. <laughs> Welcome back to For The Win. Melissa and Shankar here with you. We're talking about... Sounds like a sitcom then, right? Melissa and Shankar. I would watch that yes. show. <laughs> like a really bad 80s <laughs> sitcom. <laughs> We're talking about... I'd have to wear a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll wear shoulder pads. <laughs> big hair. About, we need big hair. <laughs> We're talking about um, the quality of relationships in the workplace and the office dynamics there. So essentially, for me, in my head, when I, I say that, I think teamwork, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, you've famously said in the past episodes that you think 
those team building exercises, they have only fleeting results, right? So they work for a little bit, but they don't have any kind of lasting consequences. Any Anyone listening to this, any HR director, manager, CEO of an organization, MD, I think I'll go so far as to say that literally everyone that I know will agree with me mm. that, you know, it is in fact a just a bonding session for us to all go and have fun. Like, you know, a friend of mine, who runs a, a, an organization with about 50, 60 people, uh, every year when they were making enough money, would take the whole team to places like Phuket and Bali and, you know, we'll have three days and they will have, you know, a lot of fun. And, and that, lot that of doesn't work as, as kind of a team building exercise? Well, they, they will come back after their three days. And, and have fun and, and reminisce remember and all ha, the, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, You know, no? you have all these reminiscent moments of the fun that you had. But then within a month or two, massive cracks will appear in the organization again. Um, and you've been in organizations like this, yeah. right, where people go away for a long weekend somewhere and, and then have, come back, and, and, you know, away days and all sorts correct, of other things, yeah. and then come back. And then, you know, everything is there just... There is a feel-good moment. I mean, there's a naturally. period, right? It's like going on holiday and coming back, you know, all of us. Yeah, there's you know, a honeymoon with, period yeah, where it. you are still you know, on that high. But if there, is no, if, if there are no aha moments, if there is no... If you don't get epiphanies along the way, uh -huh. you know, there's little moments where you go, this is what I need to do. It's awareness. Mm -hmm. It's education that actually helps us. You know, rah rahing and motivation doesn't really help us. Because if you need, you know, I always say to people, right, if you need me to motivate you, then you need me to walk around with you every day. All right? Because okay. I need, because motivation wanes all the time. Right. You know, motivation dies down. Mm. Right? Whereas if you have education, your efficacy increases tremendously simply because you get what needs to be done. Education. You need to get it. Education in what way? Well, it's not motivation, it's education. Educate, oh, so, yeah, yourself. Education, what way, educate yeah. yourself about? about what you need to do in order for it to make it work. So okay. if you educate yourself to understand that what I need to do is I need to study the people that I work with. I need to build strong, solid relationships with them. You know, high value tasks and low value tasks, right? So I always say this, the simplest example. Mm. So I hire you. So, so Melissa, I'm hiring you to come in as a trainer to work in my organization. Mm -hmm. right, let's, let's assume I'm hiring you. Right. Now, I'm hiring you because I have a lot of work mm -hmm. and I need someone to come and take some of that pressure off me. Mm. So you are there to ease my burden mm -hmm. and to earn me more money as well. Right? Because now the two of us can go out and we can run concurrent programs. So instead of earning X dollar, X ringgit in one program, I can earn double X. Right. Because Melissa will represent the company and go and run another program here. Mm -hmm. right? This is So purpose drive is very clear. clear. Yeah. Right? But the moment you come and join me, I am alpha male. I know how I like my business to be run. There is an imaging and a branding of who I am, and I want my business to be run that particular way. So I want anyone representing me in a training program to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do I need to do now? So I hire, I interview, I do three interviews, I do all of that, I hire you, and most organizations stop at that point. They go, all right, so you've got the credentials, you've got the qualifications, you've got the experience, now go and do it. Right. All right. So for example, you came from radio into television, no? So they hire you because you're good at what you do, you're good at what you did in, uh, on radio. That doesn't immediately translate to television. No, it doesn't. Right? So you have a steep learning curve right I now did, to figure it yeah. out. And you know why you do it, you know what you want, and you know how invested you were mm. in getting it right. So you do it right. Mm. You know? Many people are not. They come to like, okay, so I'm good, right? So I'm good, so I come in there. And then the boss says, okay, now do the job. Now. Okay, you do like this, now you go and do the job. Because you're here to ease my burden. Right. And you think your purpose is over. No, the highest value task when you hire someone is to then spend the requisite amount of time with them to train them, to match expectations, to build a relationship so they know. So the real work comes after, after you hire. After the hiring. And, okay. I need, and then, but I also need to work out how long this is a high value task for mm, me. Mm. It's the law of diminishing returns. Okay. Right. So at a particular point, so I need to set myself a target. So you come in as a trainer to me. I will set myself a target that, you know what, I'm going to hold Melissa's hand for the next three months, okay. 90 days. At that 90 days, I'm at the peak of my usefulness, my time, my time usage. After, at the 91st day, it's the law of diminishing return now. Okay, so, it's so coming the longer down. you spend with the longer someone training, comes. So everything that we do, there's high value and it's really time bound, it's very contextual. Okay. Which so is what's missing in most organizations. That's high value tasks, right? Versus low value well, tasks. You know, it's just a, I don't want to be laborious in the point. My wife would say I'm being laborious right now, but 
Another very visceral example is something that happens in a lot of companies, right? So you have an engineer mm. who's incredibly good at the job that they do, right? So natural progression, what do you do? You keep promoting them, become lead engineer, become senior engineer, and then you want to become, then you go like, you know, head of engineering, right? right? So they get appointed as head of engineering. This guy or this lady prior to this has scored top. Like, you know, if you have a, I don't know, zero to 10, she's always at number 10 doing the best, right? right? Now you make her or make him the head of engineering. Why? Natural progression. Yeah. Right? And they also want the extra money and everybody says, yeah, this is the right thing to do. And you find that one year after you make them the head of engineering, they suddenly their performance, their efficacy, everything drops. They're no longer hitting 10, they're hitting four or five. Because when you are an engineer, a research engineer, whatever engineering work that you do, you're a technical specialist. Right. When you become the head of engineering, your technical speciality is no longer important. It's, it's people management. People management. Correct. And if you don't teach them how to manage people, and then you naturally, pro you know, you think it's natural progression, and then you get really upset with mm. them because they're not performing. Right. Why is it that when she worked as at this, she was really good? Why is it that when I put her there, what? How can much money? You know, you have all these confusion. This is the teamwork, the lack of understanding of what teamwork means. Teamwork okay. is me actually knowing that you and I have a functional relationship. I actually have to spend time with you in order for you to understand me. If I have a kind of a leadership role over you, if I'm colleagues, you and I, like what I said earlier, you know, in order for me to be successful, I need to help you become successful. Yeah, I love that, by the way. Yeah. That's a really great line. So. The education you're talking about is really educating people how to relate to someone else in the workplace, especially if you're involved in people yeah. management. You said something, Shankar, a little bit earlier. You said, we need to take time to study the people that we work with. Yep. I thought that was really interesting because essentially what that means is that it's not just kind of superficial water cooler conversation. No. It's, I really need to know how you work. Yep. And how I really need to know who you are who as well. Who you are, mm. right? That comes from, usually, that comes from working with someone closely for a very long time. Right. But is there a way to shortcut that process? Yes, by being authentic. Ah. So when you're what authentic you with people, mm. which means I'm not going to tell you anything about myself if I don't know anything about you, right? I also am not that interested in you to start off with. So that's the first point. <laughs> right. So avoid that. Yeah. Okay. So don't come and tell me every damn problem that you have on a daily basis. Oh, you fought with your child this morning. Oh, your, your dog barked a bit too loud and woke the neighbors up. I'm like, yeah, yeah or whatever. Isn't that yeah. how you get to know someone? Well, yes, but if you, you, you can't be tedious and laborious about it. Okay. You can't, you know, you can't yeah, become like, an insufferable Because you'll, you'll switch off, right? Yeah, if someone whiner. keeps telling you that. Okay. You have those kinds of people at the office. It's I those do. insufferable I whiners do, yeah. that just go on and on. But at the same time, don't be so aloof and so detached where people don't know who you are. Right? Oh, so what you need is, you need to find that little balance. And the right. balance is like anything else, you know. Why would I want to talk to you? I'm driven by purpose. I know I need to, I need to create a good relationship with you. Mm. And, and I also know that you will care about me a little bit more if I care about you as well. Mm. Right? So I have to be genuinely caring in terms of what happens to you. And if you talk to some of the best leaders, or if you observe, not talk, if you connect with some of the best leaders, entrepreneurs, people who are very successful, you'll find that they have this touch, this we call it charisma, they are very connected with people, so on and so forth. But really, they just care. In that moment, they care about you. So they come up to you and say like, Melissa, how did I, how was it? Was it nice? You go back, how's your mom? Is she okay? You know, is your mom well? You know, the last time you told me that she wasn't so well, or, or this or that, or whatever. Um, I don't know much, but I just need to remember and keep it in the recesses of my mind that this person does that. Okay. I mean, you've seen those TV programs, right, where the President of the United States is walking to meet someone, and the chief of staff or somebody running behind you like, that's Melissa Idris, she works with Astro, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. She went back to Penang That's right, so two kids, you know, and then she goes like, Ms. Idris, how are you? And immediately you're like, wow, the President of the United my States name. remembers okay. my name, you know? That's because some minder is doing it, and that's the, that's the skill, that's what we're actually learning. And that's what we need to do at the workplace. Actually genuinely care about people, be authentic. The moment you're authentic with people, you'll find that they will open up to you. And the opening up is not because you want to pry into their life. The opening up is so you understand. So if I, if I understand that you are someone who enjoys going to the movies, mm. right? And if I'm trying to make, explain something to you, if I have some common frame of reference, it's easy. So if I know that you are a movie goer, yeah and I saw a movie and I want to tell you don't do this, then I'll say, you yeah, don't do it like this. You know, you remember in that particular movie that happened? That kind of stuff will happen now for us. And that resonates right away. 
if I know that you're a musician, if I know that you like uh, animals, then I will say, do you know when cats and dogs meet? Like, you know, you know when two dogs meet, they don't actually look at each other, they look sideways. If I, if I tell you that, immediately, immediately resonates. Immediately, yeah. Immediately okay. resonates. And that's all it is. It's, it's, it's understanding the terrain. Okay. So if you can understand the terrain of the workplace of the people that you work with, that's what builds teams. That's when you get the team dynamic. It's that not is when, it. No, okay. it's not when you hold hands and sing kumbaya. It's, not, you know what I mean? it's not a one-off team building oh, exercise. Ever. It is every day being genuine and learning yeah. about someone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for this week, Shankar. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to invite you back next Ooh. week because we want to talk about how to behave at work. What are the rules of engagement when it comes to working in the office so make sure you tune in for with for the win next week same time i'm melissa idris signing off